If your current website is powered by EpiServer CMS and you want to upgrade it to the promised land of Optimizely CMS 12 and you haven't got a Scooby of what to do, then this, my friend, is the video for you. So in this video, you will learn about a path of how to upgrade your website. You're going to learn about some tooling to make your life a little bit easier. You're also going to learn about probably the biggest thing, some of the issues that you're going to encounter along the way. And sadly, there's no magic silver button that you can press and all your website just magically going to get converted and work. There's going to be quite a lot of refactoring. So I'm going to cover all of that in this video and it's going to be amazingly fun. I'll kickstart this video off with the number one tool which will help you with this upgrade and that is smashing on the subscribe button and then clicking on the like button to help me with the YouTube algorithm. And as a little award, because I know that you did that, I'm going to show you a picture of a very beautiful website. Woo! There are two considerations that you need to make before you start your upgrade. Now, the first one is a classic. Should you use ASP.NET 5? Should you be using ASP.NET 6? The answer to this is simple, .NET 6, silly. So in case you didn't know, .NET 5 was about 50% quicker than .NET 4. .NET 6 is about 40% quicker than .NET 5. So if you want to run on the fastest platform, .NET 6. Now, the other thing which you may not be aware of is LPS or lifetime support. So Microsoft gives different support times for different versions of .NET. Now, .NET 5 didn't have LTS, which meant it was only supported for one year. .NET 6 has LTS, so it means it's going to be supported for the next three years. So if you don't want to worry about upgrading anytime soon, pick six and it'll make your life super easy. The second consideration is probably a little bit more difficult. And that is, should you upgrade your current solution or should you start with a blank slate? Now, because we're going from framework to core, a lot of things are going to change. So your web config goes, your global ASAPs goes. You're going to have to move things like your epi server media folder into www root. You're going to have to do the same for JSCS. None of your old code is going to work anymore. It needs to be ported into the new world. Now, you could try and upgrade your current solution. However, doing this means you're going to be presented with thousands of errors. I've done about 50 or 60 major CMS upgrades in my life with all different types of CMS. And I know that in these big bang approaches, being presented with thousands of errors can sometimes mean you can't even get your website to compile for like several days. And then when it does, nothing works. You have to spend ages and ages just trying to fix things and uncomment things and hacking away. Now, a better approach, in my humble opinion, is to start with a clean slate. Now, I'm not saying you need to refactor all your code. What I am saying is that you create a blank solution with Optimizely CMS 12, you call it the same as your old website, you mirror the class library structure of your old website. However, straight away, you're going to have a working website. Then, after you've got something up and running, using a diff tool, something like Beyond Compare or Win Merge, you can then copy over the pages from old to new, one at a time, get everything working slowly, slowly, and I guarantee that if you go this way, it's going to be quicker. Now, if you haven't done an upgrade and you never use this process, it just sounds like it's more time and effort than it's worth. However, setting up a new solution takes about 15 minutes. Using a diff tool to copy three files over takes about five seconds. So actually, when you think about it, being able to actually get something up and running within a day or two is a lot more powerful than maybe having to wait 10 days. Anyway, you don't have to listen to me, some nutter off the YouTube. You can do whatever makes you happy. However, in this video, I'm going to assume that you followed my advice because you're an absolute legend. Assuming that you are a legend, then you decided to go clean slate. One of the first things you need to do is make sure you back up your database and your web root. Obviously, commit everything in source control because being able to avert things is going to help you. Now, what you want to do is file up SQL Manager, create yourself a brand new database. Let's call it Opt12. Off we go. And then you want to restore a copy of your current database into this. Our next point of call is to install a brand new vanilla Optimizely 12 CMS website. I will not cover all the steps in this video. If you want to learn how to install the CMS, I recommend you either check out my blog post, 
how to install Optimizely 12 and configure it for a development environment, or do a Google search. And you can see this legend over here has already created a video with all the steps. So after installing that vanilla sample site, the next step is to upgrade your old existing database to CMS 12 format. Doing that is pretty easy. All you need to do is open up your solution, open up app settings.json, scroll down in app settings until you find something called connection strings, episerver db. For the value, change this and get it to point to the database that we created earlier, one where we restored our existing database into. After you've done that, what you'll want to do is fire up a terminal and you'll be able to use the episerver CLI tool. In order to use this, we've got .NET, dash episerver, update, dash database, and then point it to your solution or project name. So off it will go and do its tang. Now, if you don't want to copy this off screen, I also have a related tutorial with links below. So all the gist and all that kind of stuff that you see in this video, you can get access to there. After successfully upgrading your database, now's a great time to log into the back end, make sure that everything works, log in with your username and password, all that kind of good stuff. Your first focus should be around getting a single page type up and running in the new world. Your first instinct might be to pick the home page. I don't recommend doing this. Instead, I recommend you go for the easiest, quickest win, which is normally something like a content page. Content page type normally just has content area, nothing else, jobs are good. The reason for going simple is it's going to make you feel good about yourself and you're going to see progress quickly and you're going to validate that the process works. As I said at the start of the video, in order to copy files from old to new, it's much quicker to use a diff tool. On the screen right now, I've got two very different projects. And as you can see, because the naming convention and the class library convention is different, copying things from left to right is going to be more complicated than it needs to be. This is the reason why you want to make sure that your class library structure and your folder structure marry up from old to new, because it would just be a case of clicking a button and you can copy things over. When it comes to getting this single page type up and running, I do not recommend that you try and get the page, the header and the footer all working at the same time. To make your life as simple as possible, when you're copying the view over, go into the view, delete any reference to your master layout, and then it'll make your life that much easier. The first tool which should help you out on your upgrading journey is called the .NET Upgrade Assistant. Created by Microsoft, it promises to help automate your refactoring efforts for you. In order to get going with this tool, we need to head over to our good friend, the terminal. To install the assistant, we do .NET tool install minus G upgrade assistant. This is gonna install it globally so you can access it. Then after we install this tool, we can do then upgrade dash assistant and then upgrade. And as you can see my core project. So this is gonna be your project. And as you can see in my terminal, I'm actually in that solution right now. Clicking on it is going to fire up the wizard. And from here, we're going to have about six or seven different options. We've got things like clean NuGet, uh, add template files, add config files, update source code, fix some stuff. There's a bunch of stuff in there. The second tool is more of an add on to the upgrade wizard, and it's called the EpiServer Upgrade Assistant Extensions. I have no idea where they got that name from. Genius. In order to get going with this extensions, what we want to do is go over to the GitHub. It's linked below, remember. And down here, you can see that we can grab latest release from here. Ooh. Then go over here. There's a zip file. Download that chisel. Now, after downloading it, you can see that I put mine in C, DevTools, and I've got this zip file that I've abstracted right here. In order to get going with the upgrader, in my CLI, you can see I've got upgrade assistant, upgrade, project, then dash dash extension. Then I'm pointing to that folder and I need to do this dash dash ignore dash unsupported dash features. Now, if you don't do that dash dash ignore dash unsupported dash features, you'll get an error. So don't say I didn't warn you. Now, clicking on this, you can see that we're going to get the wizard coming up. And from here, you're going to get loads of options. So hopefully you can see some of this, but we can update our code files with some of these epi server related fixes 
we can upgrade our app config we can do all sorts of stuff now because we're using the slowly copy from old into new you won't need to do half this stuff however these kind of apply epic server fixes might save you loads of time so it's definitely a worthwhile tool to know about microsoft released the dotnet portability analyzer which it claims will help developers get a good understanding about how complicated the upgrade process might be. What it would do is scan all your dependencies and then give you a report telling you what's going to upgrade and what will break. Sadly, if we look at the marketplace extension here, you can see it only works with 2017-19. So if you're on 2020, you're out of luck. Now, if I'm honest, I've had a few issues trying to get this project to work. So what happens is that after you install it in the extensions, as you can see here, my project builds green. And all I need to do now, apparently, is right click on this, go to analyze project portability. Clicking on this should now give me a beautiful report telling me what's going to work. However, there's been an internal server error from the tool, and it's my fault because I should be using the most latest version. If you can get the .NET portability analyzer to work in your solution, then it will make your life a little bit easier. And fingers crossed that it works in your solution because I was well out of luck. After getting your page to render, the next step is go back to your view, uncomment out the reference to your master file, copy all those files, and then get your header and footer working. Congratulations. Well played, sir. You now have your first page type up and running, and you now have the gist of the process. Next, you want to copy over the second page type and carry on until you've got all of your pages up and running and everything's magical. Now, after that, don't think you've finished. Just because you've upgraded all your pages, the next thing is to think about plugins. The number of plugins in CMS 11 no longer work in CMS 12. So your next step is to enable things like your sitemap, RSS feeds, 404 pages, redirects, all that kind of stuff, they need to be done. Now, if you don't know which extensions to run, I have done another video, which will be linked to in the tool below. It will go through some epic stuff that I recommend you look at. Now, after plugins, you need to think about performance. Unfortunately, you won't be able to copy your performance code straight from framework into the new world. In .NET Core, we don't have things like the output cache. You'll probably have to think how you do your JS and CS bundling and minification. So all of that stuff needs to be reimagined. Expect to add in some new plugins, some packages, all that kind of good stuff. It's going to take a while. I like that stuff. However, yeah, plan it in. And then after that, obviously, you've got things like making sure you copy all the settings from web config into app drop settings. You need to make sure that you've copied all the code from global assets into your program.cs. And then after that, hopefully, you should be done. Oh, yeah, test it. And write some unit tests. Let's go. Huzzah, you've made it. So you've now upgraded your website. Hope this guy has helped you. Obviously, going from framework to core, there's no magic silver bullet. There's going to be a bit of pain. You're going to have to refactor stuff. Yes, the upgrade assistant may help you. It may cause more harm in the long run. Personally, I like to apply fixes myself. So when things go wrong in production, I know exactly what's changed and what I need to do. However, as always, do what makes you happy. If your upgrade went well or you had a nightmare, let me know in the comments below. Any tips and advice can help the community. It's just going to help the world make you an absolute legend. It's also got that time in the video when I need to pedal my wares. Because I asked you at the beginning, I know you've done it. and I don't need to ask again. So if you haven't, smash the subscribe button and please click on the like button. Help me with the YouTube algorithm. See my content because I do weekly stuff on web development, productivity, loads of stuff which will help you become an absolute boss in your job. If you really want to learn about EpiService CMS 11 as well, I also have a book, it's linked to you below. I've also got a Sunday session newsletter linked to you below. So if you want to get industry news, some programming humor in your inbox every Sunday, then subscribe, it's free, blah, blah, blah. Otherwise, I hope you've had an amazing upgrading experience. Could happen. Happy coding.